Okay, so tonight we're going to do an experiment. Uh, you see, I have here a beautiful mount. This is the ZWAM5N. I have the SQA55 telescope on top of it. I have the QHY Minicam N8 setup. Everything is beautiful. Everything is polar aligned. The tripod and the mount, they're perfectly level. Everything's awesome. But what I'm going to do is something horrific. I am going to completely make the tripod and the mount not leveled at all. So let me show you. Hopefully you can see I have a nice block here and I'm going to put it under the tripod leg. Ooh, this feels dodgy. So now uh, this uh, mount is no longer level like at all. Okay, but why am I doing that? I am doing that to demonstrate that basically you do not need to have your mount perfectly horizontal uh, for it to work well and track well. Uh, so if you're going to like a, an unknown site and you don't, you don't want to spend like 10 minutes properly leveling your mount base, that kind of stuff, that's fine. As long as you're able to achieve polar alignment and we'll see polar alignment is going to be more difficult and you have things like plate solving to help you frame a target because the home position of the mount will also be affected. So I expect the initial go-to to actually be very inaccurate. But as long as you have those conditions, plus you want to make sure that the mount and the equipment will not tip over. For me, it's a very light refractor and the uh, level isn't that horrible, even though it's uh, actually pretty bad. The more I look at it, the more I feel uncomfortable. But I'll show you that I'll be able to pull our line in the mount. I'll be able to target uh, a target. I'll be able to guide properly. It's going to all work and I won't really have any issues with that. And the message isn't to say like, hey, you can uh, grossly have your mount base completely not leveled. Or it's not to say like, yeah, Quiv said that I could have the mount completely unleveled and then, you know, your whole equipment tips over during the night because it, it, it was too much off level and, and we get like a a tipping over event. You don't want that, right? But all I'm trying to say in this video is that for equatorial mount, the story is completely different from for alt azimuth mount, but for equatorial mount, you do not need perfect leveling. Also, most of the time, the bubble levels that are placed in those mounts, they're not horizontal themselves in relationship to the mount base. There's a bit of imprecision. So all I'm saying is don't spend too much time leveling the mount. And now let's go and get this demonstrated. So first, let me show you the polar alignment routine with this mount head very much not level. And uh, we're going to use the Nina three-point polar alignment, which is basically the same routine as the polar alignment in the ASI Air. And you will see that the polar alignment might be a bit less comfortable than usual, simply because the mount head is no longer level, which means that when I move the azimuth bolts of the mount, then I'm moving the mount horizontally mostly, but a little bit vertically. And vice versa, when I try to move the mount altitude, I'll be mostly affecting the altitude of the mount, but I will also be affecting the azimuth. So I will likely need a bit more iterations before I get the proper alignment. Okay, so I'm in Nina. I am in the three-point polar alignment uh, process. I'll just click play and let Nina do the work to uh, basically analyze the, the stars, which it will do just as usual. Nina doesn't really care whether the mount is level or not. It actually does not know. Okay, and as I expected, I am very far off from the polar alignment because I did this procedure with the, uh, with the mount and the tripod with the cinder block. I'm very, very sorry about that. And you can see I should move right by three degrees. So I'll kind of do that manually, see what happens. Okay, I'm actually very close now in terms of the left-right movement. And I also need to move the mount up by 2.5 degrees roughly. And as you can see, as I was moving the mount up uh, a little bit only, the azimuth was also affected just like I expected. And as I moved the mount up again, the, the azimuth is even more affected. Although it's not as catastrophic as I, want, as I imagined it would be. Okay, so now I'm actually fairly close. I'm like one degree, uh, half a degree away. I'm going to stop that and redo the uh, polar alignment from scratch. This is because I started with a large difference in polar alignment, which reduces the 
precision of the final alignment achieved. This is also true with the ASI Air. So if you, even though it doesn't tell you anything about it, if you start your polar alignment routine and you're like more than one or two degrees off, uh, you will want to do it twice in a row just to be sure. That's a little uh, uh, knowledge nugget to have as well. Okay, so let me try again. Okay, and uh, we're done with the second uh, three-point polar alignment. It's mostly, again, moving up by almost a degree, so I'll do that. Something like this. Let's see what happens. Okay, and now I just need to move it right, mostly. Okay, so I move it right a little bit. And you can see it affected, again, the altitude a bit more than I would expect. I'll move it right a little bit more, just so that we're in the same, in the proper ballpark. Okay, and now my azimuth error is basically perfect, but I have... Uh, two arc minutes of uh, of imperfection in the altitude, which is actually, actually not a big deal at all. I could call it a day, but hey, we're having fun, so let me put it. Okay, and I think we're good enough. Uh, it was actually more easy, or easier even, <laughs> than I expected, so not a big deal here. Okay, so let's uh, open up PhD2. And uh, hello, PhD2, and we can point PhD2 towards the celestial equator. So I am going to go to the tools, calibration assistant, and tell it to slew not far to the uh, celestial equator because I need to calibrate PhD2 once again uh, since the angle also of my uh, guide scope is different. I'm also double checking that it's not tilting over. Okay, and now we are pointed in the right direction. So I'm just going to click on calibrate and let PhD2 do its job. And while we wait for the calibration process to complete near the celestial equator, how well do you think this will work? Let me know down in the comments while you're going there. Please leave a like on the video. It really helps the channel out. And if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of experiment, although please do not try this at home because this is dangerous, you may want to consider subscribing, in which case, welcome to the channel. And if you want to support the channel even more at no cost to you and you're planning on buying anything like this mount, for instance, from Agena, High Point Scientific, or even Amazon, if you do so after clicking the links that I have down in the description, it will help me out at no cost to you. And if you want to directly sponsor my videos and this kind of silly experiment, you can join the channel as a member. This is the join button next to the subscribe button or join my Patreon. The link is down in the description. And my Patreon supporters, my channel members, you make those videos possible. You are the true VIPs, the sponsors of this channel. Thank you so much. Anyway, let's see, did this succeed? Will I actually be able to guide? Let's have a look. Okay, so I need to talk a little bit like less loudly so I don't move a lot because I'm on a big slab of wood and any movement I do can actually affect the mouth, including breathing for that matter. But you can see we are guiding and we are guiding with what 0.84 arc seconds and throughout the previous night when I've been imaging, imaging that's basically what I was getting, and I wasn't even that close to the celestial equator. So the guiding is working perfectly fine, as far as I can tell, even at the area where it's supposed to be the most difficult to guide, which again is near the celestial equator. Okay, but what about going to a target? What happens if I try to do so? Because the home position of the mount is kind of skewed now by the fact that I'm not well leveled. So let's try that. Let me try to uh, slew to uh, random stars. So let's say Hamal. Okay, we are slew to the target and now I'm going to use the plate solving to center the target. And my expectation is that we are quite far off, far off by roughly the same angle that the tripod is not leveled off by. Uh, so let's, let's try it. Let's see if it has to slew quite a bit, like, a, some, like cup, three degrees, four, uh, no, that's more, like quite a little bit. We'll see, let's have a look and let's see what happens. So let's do some plate solving and centering of the target. Okay, and you can see indeed the error distance was huge, five degrees, which yeah, it tracks. And you see how it rotated, how it moved, it moved towards me basically to counteract the angle, the, the uh, inappropriate level that I have on the tripod. And now we are on target after moving a whole five degrees of error to counteract the roughly five degrees of unlevel that I have on this mount. This is actually pretty cool to see. Now, 
this leads to another potential issue with this kind of setup, uh, which, again, you should never do in real life. All I'm trying to say is that small errors in leveling of your mount will not affect you at all whatsoever. So you don't need to spend 10, 20 minutes on leveling your mount head. That's all I'm trying to say. But when you get to such an extreme, then the mount home position compared to like where it's pointed, you have like this five degrees error, right? Now imagine that this is a five degrees error purely in right ascension, which in our case, it almost is the case. Think about things like horizon limits, meridian limits, that kind of stuff. They'll start to get affected as well. And they are actually going to get affected if you don't do any plate solving. If you do plate solving, the mount is then aware of exactly where it's pointed. But originally the mount thought that it was pointed at the star Hamal, but it was five degrees off. So if we didn't do the plate solving to tell the mount where it was actually pointed, then the mount limits would be off by five degrees. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So that's uh, uh, quite a bit of fun. But now we are in a configuration that the mount is polar aligned. The equipment is set up in a way that the, the mount itself also knows exactly where it is pointed. So from the mount's perspective, there's no issue anymore. It doesn't care that the mount head and the tripod are at such an awkward angle. Okay, and I am now imaging the Jellyfish Nebula with my setup completely out of leveling just to see what's going to happen. So we are in Japanese winter, we have very bad seeing and we have wind. So it's never going to be perfect, but this is how the guiding looks like. I have like 0.94. And if I'm looking at one of my other rigs, because I have yeah, those three rigs imaging at the same time, the one at the front here, the Newtonian has roughly an RMS of 0.92. So we're quite close in between those different rigs. And as I was expecting, the uh, rig, despite being five degrees off perfect level, seems to be working fine because we have an equatorial mount that is properly polar aligned. And once you're properly polar aligned and you can use the power of plate solving, things will work as long as nothing tips over. And this is the type of image uh, that I'm getting. This is the latest image. Uh, stars are nice and sharp. I don't see much of any issue, things are just working. That's pretty cool. Again, this isn't just to tell you that you can have like massively like uh, off level mounts, etc. It's just to tell you that you don't need to spend a huge amount of time just to get your mount head perfectly level. It doesn't matter as long as it's not tipping over, you can achieve polar alignment fairly easily. And you know, everything works fine otherwise. That's pretty much the lesson of this uh, slightly silly experiment. But let me know if you think I'm doing something wrong. Let me know down in the comments. While you're at it, you can like the video. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to support me more directly to do such silly experiments and you're planning on buying anything from a Gina High Point Scientific, like the mount that I've been torturing during this test, for instance, <laughs> if you do so after clicking the links that I have down in the description, it will help me out at no cost to you. And if you want to sponsor the channel, sponsor those really silly tests even more and also tutorials, reviews, etc. You can join the channel as a member or join my Patreon as a supporter and you guys make this channel possible, you know it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.